Master, most wasteful visiting grandmasters, most wasteful past grandmasters, distinguished ladies, brethren all, on behalf of my dear wife who sits here, and then it is my duty others a special communication to mark the 10th anniversary of the Grand Lodge of Ghana to extend a warm welcome to all present to Kumasi. I say a special akwaba to our visitors from outside Ghana and with the hope that you will always cherish fond memories of this visit in coming years. Anniversaries are occasions for celebration it is also a time for reflection on achievements and shortfalls over the period and to determine the way forward for improved performance and aspirations. In our world of Freemasonry, 10 years of existence is but a drop in the ocean compared to the tricentennial, bicentennial, and centennial of the existence of our mother grand lodges and daughter and subordinate lodges. In our own Grand Lodge, all the subordinate lodges except one are older than the Grand Lodge. We are therefore a babe in arms. The advantage of our situation is that we have older lodges and Grand Lodges to look up to for guidance and direction, to adapt to our special cultural, political and spiritual situation while retaining the basic and universally accepted underpinning characteristics of the craft. As we are all aware, it is 20 years since I, I was enthroned of the golden to Asia Santini. I'm therefore also going through the same process of reviewing the state of the Asante Kingdom. Much as I expect and hope that there have been great development strides in, in improved conditions of the state, there is also the imperative need to maintain those traditions that define the kingdom to us and to ensure that the state and its structures remain truly relevant to all players and participants in the coming years. This is equally true and applicable in our Grand Lord. On this occasion of our 10th anniversary, therefore, I ask the simple question, where do we aspire to as a Grand Lodge in the next 10 years? We may, be, we may be tempted to first assess where we are now and then second, determine incremental improvements on our achievements to date as our targets. I, however, wish to challenge ourselves to set higher targets to reflect and capture our dreams for the future of our Grand Lord. I am confident that our dreams will be more grandeur and better than straightforward improvements. Dream targets are challenges which require hard work, determination and commitment to achieve. The joy of achieving dreams can however be immeasurable. I shall therefore proceed to state what in my capacity as a, as a grand patron will give me unalloyed joy after the coming decade in terms of membership, commitment of brethren, practice of charity, relevance of our institution to our families and communities, and maintaining a high standard of performance in the delivery of our ritual for attractive and educative ceremonies. This anniversary celebration is the opportune time to look at how to maintain continuing, continuing keen interest of brethren in our activities. It is an incontrovertible reality that in our modern technological and cultural environment, with the pro proliferation of faith establishments and electronic social platforms, we face not only competing calls on our time and resources, but attacks on our craft, 
which may tend to impede on our availability and resources for the craft. The onus of engendering interest in attracting and retaining members must therefore be of high concern of each member. We also have to be more selective and cautious in recommending and admitting new members. The surest route for attracting new entrants has always been and will continue to be by a constant demonstration of a high standard of comportment in our individual lives. We are prone to concentrate our recruitment efforts on friends we meet and interact in other social env environments. The problem has always been that my golf friend, fellow church member, old schoolmate, work colleague, or even a family member may not have the same inclination or attitude for that particular group you belong towards becoming a Freemason. We need to spend more time, more prime time, to assess and cultivate potential candidates. The more we make admission appear casual and easy, the more difficult it will be to retain candidates after entry into the craft. We must concentrate on quality membership rather than a large half keen population. Good quality membership will be characterized by regular attendance, fulfillment of financial obligations, beautiful ceremonies, and cordial interactions both within and outside the lodge. That should be our aspiration. Commitment of each brother in the lodge is the strong base on which our subordinate lodges will thrive and bring joy in the participation of activities. Commitment is essential to maintain members, contribute to the involvement of our family, especially spouses in our social activities, mentor new members and participate in promoting the province and the Grand Lodges. We own the Lodge and must therefore be committed to it, to it achieving and, and meet our individual and corporate expectations of bringing us together as family. We pride ourselves immensely on our focus of extending charity to the neighborhood in which we operate and also to our less fortunate brethren. Here, I wish to challenge all of us to give serious commitment to charity, which we emphatically claim to be the hallmark of our craft. Our efforts must be at all levels, the subordinate largest level and at the provincial and grand largest levels. It has been recently reported that our mother Grand Lodges, without any prompting at all, donated nearly 50,000 pounds to assist in the relief efforts in the three East African countries devastated by cyclone. Are we inspired to emulate such humane examples if we cannot match the quantum of the contribution? Again, are we being able to maintain our uh, incomparable contribution to the National Blood Bank of a recent Should we expect regular good reports of support to the health needs of our populace? I'm informed a few lodges are making great strides to practice our avowed characteristic of charity. The question for the future is, can we do more on a more regular planned way? Let us therefore continue with our Christmas handshake to our widows. Let us, above all, ensure that our charity efforts are well publicized at all levels of Grand Lord. Let me add that, as a Grand Patron, the constant reaching out to our communities to assist the needy will be of prime interest and of a great joy to me. What do our communities, families, and friends think of us as Freemasons? This, I am convinced, is a question we ought to pose to ourselves regularly and ensure we achieve noticeable relevance to the immediate community in which we operate, including our families. Our families need to become our natural advocates to install and promote our craft. We therefore have to involve them more in our activities, especially in our charity efforts and in our installation arrangements 
and with specially organized family outings and get-togethers. We have the potential to spend quality time with our children and wives for a happy, inclusive family life. It is always a sad reflection on us, as individuals and as a body, that potential Lewis's children of Masons are discouraged by their own mothers to stay away from the crowd because of neglect felt by our, our wives, by, wives by our past activities. Our families should be our best promoters of the craft, and it is incumbent we encourage and evolve them in our activities. The presence of our families and non-Masons with us today must mark the beginning of a regular interaction with our communities and families. This will also gladden my heart as a Freemason. After 10 years, I feel sad to observe I feel sad to observe that we are still without a befitting Grand Lodge office. What else do I need to say but to hope that as our fathers in time past built magnificent structures to be proud of as a Grand Lodge, we also have the additional responsibility to maintain, upgrade, and furnish our existing structures. Here in Kumasi, as an example, the once resplendent Fantini Town Temple is crying out for intense renovation. Deteriorating structures do not promote our cause. I'm also aware of the uncompleted building at the Ahonjo location which needs our attention. In summary, let us work to populate our lodges with committed freedom.